Alrighty. Hopefully I uh, have the uh, volume figured out properly this time. So, before we get anywhere, let's uh, talk a little bit about what I want to do today. So if you've been following along with um, the previous streams at all, you might remember in our update product details view form, uh, we've got this child component for the banner image. And I thought that was a child component at one point, but it looks like we never went back to it being a child component. So that's something we can talk about on this stream. But anyways, the way that this works is we have to submit a, uh, da -da -da, a patch request to the server to update the product, right? So that's this form here uh, with the name, price, and all that stuff, and the image. And the image is kind of the part that is going to make this uh, stream hopefully interesting. So because of the fact that we're sending through an image as well as all these fields, uh, we are forced to use like this form data thing and send it through as a post request masquerading as a patch request. Uh, otherwise we can't send through like multi-part form data. Um, I kind of dislike that. I think it would be cool if uh, we could do this in two steps. So I'd like to be able to change this request that updates the product uh, to a regular JSON style request. And instead of passing through the actual image, passing through some sort of reference to it. Um, so what I'd like to do is try and drive out a second endpoint that we can upload the image to before updating the product and have that endpoint give us back like the path to the image so that we can specify in the new JSON the path to the image to use, if that makes sense. So I haven't uh, done anything to prepare for this or anything. So we're just gonna be kind of figuring out as we go. So uh, the first thing I'm trying to look at here is just trying to get an understanding of the sorts of paths that we're gonna see. And I wanna look at the controller and the product model to understand how this stuff is interacting too. So if we look at the product class, there's a get image URL attribute. So if the image path is null, uh, we return null because there is no image URL. Otherwise, we use the public disk uh, and get the path to the image based on this image path here. And if I'm not mistaken, that is uh, symlinked into storage here. Uh, yeah, so there's all this crap that ends up in there basically, but it goes into public storage images. Uh, so all these paths are going to be relative to um, the storage directory at the root of the site. So let's look at the controller. Get an understanding of some of the decisions that were made in making this work. So one of the nice things about what we're going to do here, hopefully, is it's going to remove the need for us to store this image as part of this request, which would be kind of cool, and remove the need to kind of filter this out and do some funky stuff there. So uh, we get the file, we tell it to be stored at the images path in the public directory, and that gives us uh, the path back. One thing that's not immediately easy to understand when you're working with Laravel's file upload stuff, in my experience, is understanding how all the different things interact, like how storing an uploaded file interacts with your storage facade and your disk names and your paths and how things get stored. Um, so I'm just trying to get a little bit of a refresher on that and make sure that I understand exactly how things are going to work so that when we try and drive out this new endpoint with its own test, uh, that we kind of have an understanding of what we're going to be trying to test. So before we do anything fancy on uh, the view side, I guess we should be driving all this out on the server side with TDD. So when I said that this stream was going to be about splitting up a form with Vue.js, uh, it sounds like it's probably actually going to be a stream about TDD unless we get far enough uh, to be able to put that into action, which I, I hope we will. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this update product test. Let's find where that is in the sidebar. And here in the makers section, let's create a new file and we'll call this um, something like upload temporary or <laughs> upload product. I'd like to have this one endpoint that's kind of like where I store all my temporary files until they've been associated with something. 
So I can't decide if I want to make that generalized now or if I want to wait to generalize it. Uh, let's just call it like upload product banner test for now uh, because there's nothing else getting uploaded except banners. So let's let's deal with that first. Okay, so we'll have a test case in the feature makers area. And we'll have a test here. Ugh. Sometimes it's enter, sometimes it's tab to get that stuff to work. Who knows? So let's uh, look at the update product test, which is where we were originally uploading banner images. And maybe we can take this and create a simplified version of this test since it doesn't have to deal with any of these other pieces of data anymore. So let's just call this something like uploading a product banner. Okay, so we are gonna wanna fake the public storage, uh, which I think is reasonable. Uh, we're gonna want a user, and I uh, don't think we actually need to have a product because we're just gonna be putting these in kind of like a general bucket where everyone's images are going and relying on the fact that we get like a unique hash back uh, to be able to reference that. So, Let's check out this file facade thing. That's illuminate HTTP testing file. I vaguely remember implementing that feature in Laravel. <laughs> okay, so I think we'll just uh, upload this as like image. I'm tempted to even just call it just file, but we'll stick with image for now. Um, so we'll upload a file of some arbitrary dimensions that are valid-ish. Uh, this is going to be a post request, and it's going to be a post request to slash image uploads, maybe. Something like that. Seems good. Oh, hey, Adam Brown. Real life people that I know showing up in the chat today. That's cool. Okay, so uh, when we do that, we expect to get a 200 back. Um, we're not saving it in the database, which is pretty awesome. So that simplifies some of this. Uh, but we do want to probably assert that we get back a... Huh. <laughs> this is actually going to be tricky because we're going to be getting like an MD5 hash back. And I don't know how that is going to work with the image upload. Interesting. So maybe what we want to do is verify that we get back a path and that the path exists. So here where we have storage disk public assert exists product image path. Uh, let's do that assertion here. Because I don't know if I'm going to be able to predict the MD5, but I'd like to inspect it and see what we get. So let's assert exists uh, response. I think we have to do JSON like this and then get... Um, the path, I guess. What? Just path? Path seems fine. Okay, so this is one of the things that uh, is really appealing to me about taking this approach of splitting up the image upload from like the product updating. It really simplifies this test. So now we have a test that's just about uploading files, and we're going to have a controller that's just about uploading files. So even though we're going to have to make two AJAX requests, um, I think it's going to simplify some server-side code in a way that uh, makes it kind of worth it, I think. So let's just see what happens. So there's no storage facade, so let's get that imported. What's next? Unable to locate unimported user, so we'll get that in there. So uh, no such table users, so let's use our database migrations trait. Uh, okay, not found HTTP exception, so that's kind of what we expected. So let's head over to our routes file. And I'm just going to stick it right at the bottom. So we're going to have a post request that goes to... Do we have a prefix on these? No. And uh, where do we say it was going to go to? Image uploads. And we'll have that go to the image uploads controller. Add a store method. Let's run the test again. Uh, no controller. So let's create the controller. Artisan make controller image uploads controller. And... Those aren't namespaced, are they? No. Okay. So now that we have an image uploads controller, let's uh, open that up here. 
So there she is. Let's run the test again. No store method. So let's add a store method to this controller. Store. Let's run the tests. Invalid JSON was returned from the route. So let's just return some JSON. Okay. Now we're going to get an error. There's no path index. All right. So let's uh, return something with a hard coded path, maybe. Path. This file does not exist. JPEG. Nope. JPEG, not JPEGs. Uh, okay. Fail to turn that false is true. Okay. So the image was not saved. So that's kind of where we're trying to get here. So now we're got driven ourselves up to the point where we have to actually implement uh, the functionality of saving the image. So let's take a look at the products controller and uh, see how this is done. So it looks like all we need to do is grab this, store it, and return the path to it. So let's do something like this. Uh, path equals, and this is going to be, what do we call it? Image request file image and then return the path here and it's super naive no validation or anything yet but we'll get there so let's run this again okay so now we get an error that there's no null file so I actually don't want to have a null file because I don't want you to be able to upload nothing in this controller that was useful in the other controller uh, but since this one is simpler than that okay so that worked unbelievable so we can actually see what name the file got if we scroll down into storage framework testing disks public this is where the fake files are stored so it's just a black image and there's like the um, md5 of the contents so we could um, like predict that, like we could say, okay, well, this is what it turned out being. So let's assert that the path comes back uh, with that name. But I honestly don't think that's super valuable uh, because in the real world, we don't know it anyways. I think what matters more is that whatever comes back is a file that exists. Now, this is just happened to be returning a path to something that uh, already existed and that we didn't actually save it but I think I'm probably okay with this test unless I went out of my way to really try and like play tricks on myself I think this would give me the confidence uh, that I want for the most part I'm trying to think what else we could do um, let's look at the testing file class for a sec HTTP testing file is there anything we can do in terms of getting the contents of this or anything? So it extends uploaded file. So if we look at uploaded file, and I think there's a Illuminate one. Uh, so this just has some stuff for storing. This extends the Symfony uploaded one. So HTTP foundation, uploaded file. Um, so this extends what? Uh, HTTP foundation file. And where can we get the contents? So this extends SPL file info. So I'm not sure that the uploaded file when we create it actually writes it to disk. Maybe when we call it image it does. New file factory image. File factory image. Generate image. Yeah, it does write it to a temp path. So in theory, we should be able to get the contents of it. So let's look at SPL file info for a second. Just wondering if it's worth trying to make an assertion about that the contents of the files are what we expect them to be. I don't know if we're going to be able to easily just read the whole file into memory. Uh, does this extend something else? PHP read contents of SPL file info. Eh, this is probably not worth it. Yeah, I'm not even going to bother reading that. I'm happy with what we have. Honestly, I think it's a 
satisfactory, but it would have been interesting if there's a simple way for us to get the contents of this. Um, I guess we could do file get contents and get the path from the SPL file info. SPL file info. How do we get the path? Does file name return the full path? No, without any path information. Get path name. Gets the path to the file. So for argument's sake, Say that this was like a image. Say we did a DD on the image get path name. See what we get there. Okay, so we get a temp folder thing. If we do a DD on file get contents on that, yeah, we get a bunch of trash. So in theory, uh, one other thing I'd like to dump actually is the contents of response JSON path. Uh, okay, so that's a relative path. So we'd have to ask the disk to give us the whole full path and um, and get the contents of that and compare it. So it could be done, but it's no big deal. Not going to worry about it. So we're passing. So we're able to upload a product banner and I think I'm actually going to rename this to upload image test and uploading an image because we went with image uploads controller um, so upload image test all right still green how's the whole test suite looking all right still green cool so now that we're able to upload an image um, and get a path back. We can write some more tests to make sure that uh, a bunch of people are not able to do this. Um, let's do that quickly. Let's force ourselves to do some things. Uh, guests cannot upload images. Okay, so we'll fake the storage just to be safe. We won't create a user. We won't act as anyone. Uh, we'll try to make a post request, and then we just want to make sure that we get a 401. And we can't really do anything about that, but okay, so we got a 200 instead. Uh, so let's stick this up inside our controller here. Maybe we'll put this, mm, seems like a fine spot for it. So now that it's in that uh, middleware group, hopefully this will give us a different error so we get unauthenticated so we just want to do this with exception handling uh, make that post request uh, received a 302 so I think we actually want to hmm we need to post it as an XHR request how do we do a how do we post and set headers? Uh, makes HTTP requests, data headers. Okay, so if you look, there's a method called is XML HTTP request, and it just checks to see that this um, header is set. So let's simulate that here. So we'll add a, a header, and we'll say uh, we're gonna flip these around. So X requested with should be XML HTTP request since everything is intended to be returned this way. Since that's, we'll, we'll try and simulate what we're doing in the browser as closely as possible. Uh, so let's see if that gets us passing. It does, okay, cool. So guests cannot upload images, uh, test uploading an image. Um, let's test uh, that the image the image is required. Okay, so we'll pass through like null. And actually, let's get rid of that variable. Don't need that anymore. Okay, so uh, what should that be, a 422? And we can't do that assertion. Uh, let's not even worry about faking the storage stuff because it's not gonna get there anyways. 
So what do we get this time? Call to a member function store on null. So let's head over to our controller. Image uploads controller, and we'll validate this request. And we want to basically say that the image is required. If we could type, that would be an improvement. I like to think I don't have to look at the keys to type accurately, but it seems like that's not quite the case. Okay, failed to pass validation, so if we do with exception handling here, then we should be green, okay? Uh, let's make sure that someone can only upload images for now. Fi We'd like to be able to do all files eventually, but for now let's, let's do just images. So I'll show you how you can uh, set that up using Laravel's uh, file stuff. So we want to pass through an image, or we want to pass through an uploaded file, but we don't want that file to be an image. Uh, so if you look at the testing file PHP illuminate this class, so we can create um, a file or an image. And if we look at the illuminate testing file factory, it just writes that file this way. And uh, yeah, so I think if we just create a file and give it like a different name, that'll probably get us where we need to be. So let's do file create and uh, we'll just report a size of, hmm, what size do we want to report? I don't know if I want it to be a zero size file. Now let's make it like a 50 kilobyte file or something. And we'll call it not an image.pdf. And we'll make it like a 50 kilobytes or something. So in theory, this should fail too. If we give it the image, must be an image. This will fail because um, it's going to get accepted. So we get a 200 back instead, which is not what we want. So uh, what we need to do now is update the controller to also validate that it's an image. So I think all we have to do, if we look at Laravel's validation documentation, uh, validation, available validation rules, image. So we just say image. Beautiful. What a great framework Laravel is. <laughs> Run it again and we're green. Okay, so now I feel like we have like a fairly comprehensive set of tests for making sure that uh, you can only upload images and only logged in users can upload them. Uh, we could do some stuff about making sure the aspect ratio was a certain thing or the file size was a certain limit and stuff. And if you look here, we might actually have those sorts of tests. Nope, that's not the one. Uh, update, pro or update product test, banner. Okay, so actually, yeah, let's let's implement these. Banner images must be at least 250 pixels tall, must be at least 500 pixels wide. Okay, so uh, let's let's do that. Images must be at least 250 pixels tall. So we we'll want to create a real image this time. Man, how did I get this variable here too? Get out of here. So it'll be a real image, not a PDF. Uh, but instead of making it 1000 by 500, uh, we're going to want to make it just under 250 pixels tall. So what's the order here? Width, height. Okay, so we'll make it 1000 by, two, by 249. Uh, so this should fail. So let's go back here and we'll say, is it dimensions? Do you have to do like the rule thing probably? Let's look at the update. Uh, let's look at the products controller. Update. Product, validation rules. That's something that we did the other day. Okay, so this is basically what we want. I'm gonna copy these, but I'm only gonna make one of them active to start. Um, so let's make sure we import this rule class. And we won't set the min width one yet. Um, let's put that on a separate line just so we can comment it out for a second. Okay, let's get this one passing. OK, 
Okay, we're green. Let's do the same thing for the height. Images must be at least 500 pixels tall. So we'll make this one plenty wide, so 250, uh, but we'll make it too short. So 499. Should fail because we haven't implemented the rule. We can uncomment this, get it passing, passing, move this over there, back to a single line, because why not? And now we're good. Cool. All right, I feel pretty good about that. It's kind of weird that we have a general image uploads controller that can be used for all images, but we're only, but we're validating the size. Um, so that's something that we might have to think about down the road uh, but for now I think it's okay it'll only really make a difference when we have to accept images that are whatever are your test names wrong way around Michael Dorinda no they are not must be at least 250 pixels tall doesn't it go it goes width height if you look at uh, testing file illuminate testing file image width height so a thousand pixels wide 249 pixels tall oh this one motherfucker all right fixed thanks dorinda you were right i was wrong okay next is updating the tests for updating the product details. Now that we are expecting a path instead of um, an image. <laughs> okay. Da, 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 da. So let's just go to the very first one, updating a product. So ah. <laughs> thinking, thinking, thinking. The one thing that I'm wondering what the best solution for, for this is quite the sentence I'm trying to construct here, but basically we're going to want to verify that the image path is a real image. So we probably want to make sure that the, uh, wherever we check for that stuff, um, it's going to tell us that the image exists. So let's go to our storage fake. Is that a thing? Fake storage? Let's go to our storage facade. Uh, facade, storage, fake. Create local driver. That's cool. So we can actually just put a file there. Neat. I like it. Okay, I think I have a way that we can do this. So we're going to fake the public storage. Then we're going to say file create image. Um, we're going to say path equals file image. Uh, what the hell is the first argument? The name banner.png. Um, dimensions of 500 by 250 and we're going to store that in the images directory in the public folder and let's just dump this path okay so we are getting like a path to it which is sweet and that image is going to exist for the life cycle of this request which is good um, so we can just say call this like banner path or something. And then we'll pass that in here. And I actually don't want to do that. I want to do that here. Damn it. Banner path. Mm. Yeah, I haven't come up with the best solution for removing the old images yet. I think like the way that I actually want to do it is I'm trying to do this in small steps, but I, I'd like to upload files to a temporary area, like a sort of a staged area, and then 
when I, when I update the product, I want to say use this staged file for the new image. And when I do that, I want to take that staged file and move it to like a permanent location. Um, and then what I want to be able to do over time is like write a cron job or some scheduled job that basically cleans up that temp directory and deletes anything that's like a week old or older. Um, and then the same thing with my file storage for the actual product banners uh, that just goes through and every file that's not associated with a product should get deleted, that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Maybe we can bake in the deleting into this one too. The problem is if two people upload the same image, they're going to have the same hash in the same folder and we wouldn't want one person to be deleting an image that belongs to someone else. Uh, because they happen to both be using the same header image, even though they're different accounts or something. So there are some things to be careful of. Something that will need to be thought through, uh, for sure. Okay, so this should work. We want to... I don't care about asserting that that exists. I care about asserting that the product image path equals the banner path. Okay, we get a failure, failed to pass validation. So let's go to our products controller, update method, and find our validation rules inside of our product. So the banner image does not have to be an image anymore or meet these criteria at all. That's probably what we're hitting here. Undefined variable banner path. Oh, we gotta use the banner path. Gross. Okay, that makes sense because our controller, okay, I'll show that error again actually. Um, we were expecting to get this hashed path but we got the old image path. So that is because uh, we haven't updated our controller to be dealing with this just expecting a path anymore. Uh, so I think probably I'm almost tempted to change the name of this argument because this is misleading in some ways. Uh, but let's just get it working first. So all we need to do here is instead of doing request file, blah, 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 we just need to go request file banner image. Okay, didn't work still, eh? Pan e image. If I could type, that would be an improvement. Okay, we're green. All right. So now we can try and think, do we want to change that name at all? Why don't we call it like... So, actually, this is just image path. So why don't we just make it image path across the board? Okay, and run it again, should fail now. Update it here to be image path. Okay, so now we're green. So uh, if we run this whole test, I'm pretty sure it's gonna break in a bunch of interesting ways, but that's okay. Let's just go through some of these other tests and uh, see if there's anything that's just completely outdated now. So price is optional. What does valid params return? Valid params does not return a banner image, so those ones don't need to change. Uh, since the banner image was optional, it actually probably only is gonna affect the, like this one. It's like banner image is only replaced if provided. So this is actually some behavior that we're gonna change now. So if someone passes through a null banner image, I actually want it to become null in the database. Uh, so this gives, makes it easier for me to support like deleting a banner image, which I couldn't really do with the old implementation. So this is passing, which is bad. So this is kind of a funny situation because we're in like a, we have a test that's passing. And the reason that it's passing is because we have some code here that I don't want to exist anymore. Um, and to make, my goal is to make this test fail. And that's when I know the system is working as I expect. So. Uh, let's rename this test and rework it to do what we actually want to do. So 
what I want to be able to say is that a banner image can be removed. So if we have an old image path, and let's pass through this valid params, but we'll pass through an image path of null, and it should be 200. I don't care about asserting about this stuff. I just care about asserting that the product's image path is null. Two people having the same hash for an image is quite a bad idea. I agree that it's a bad idea, uh, but out of the box, that is how Laravel stores files. So if you look at like the store method on the illuminate uploaded file, you can see we do store as path, this hash name. If we look at hash name, uh, is it a trait? These file helpers maybe? Yeah. So, um, yeah, if two people uploaded the exact same file, it would have the same hash. I mean, there's some benefits to that in the sense that it saves you on disk space if multiple people do that, but there are risks in terms of you might accidentally delete a file uh, that does still belong to someone. So that's why I kind of think it's probably smarter to just delete the files based on some sort of scheduled job that checks to make sure, like just basically finds unused files and uh, removes them. But it is kind of a, a, a gross problem. I'm still in development, so I'll just let the disk build and build and build, who cares? All right, so this is failing because of the fact that I had this extra code in place here to strip out the image path and not apply it. So this actually gets a lot simpler now. Instead of having to do a collection around this stuff and reject the image path if it's null and then get the array back out, I think we can just say, get rid of the reject call first and let's make sure that that's passing. And it's not, because there's a syntax error, because we need a bracket. And if we run this again, we see it's green. And now that all we're doing is collecting it and then extracting the array out of it, well now it's like, okay, well now we don't need a collection at all. So that's pretty cool. So we can simplify some of that code a little bit more too. And then go and run this again, and we're green, so that's good. Um, does anything else have to change here? Is there anything else I want to change? I think that's actually pretty good. So let's run, uh, let's look at the other tests here. Banner image must be an image. Like, that's not true, actually. Banner image, banner image must exist. So that's kind of cool. I think this will be a fun one. So let's pass through, um, the image path as images slash file that does not exist PNG. So we have a lot of stuff about assert session has errors, uh, but we want to update that to JSON has errors. So we should have an error in the image path here. And Let's fake the storage before we do that. So that we know it's going to like a fresh, empty directory that has nothing in it. So this might be a cool opportunity to use a custom validation error. Or validation rule, although there might be a rule for it already, which would be fine, but depressing in some ways. No exists database. Cool. All right, this is cool. Um, would you like to see what it looks like to create a custom validation rule in Laravel 5.5? Because that's what we're running here. Yes, of course you would. Artisan, make rule um, uploaded file exists. Something like that. File upload exists, uploaded image exists, image upload exists, image upload, image upload exists. I like that. Okay, so we use the generator to make a new custom validation rule. 
If we scroll up to our app directory now, inside the rules folder, you can see I've got a couple other ones that I use, but here's a new one. Image uploads exists. Blah, 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 blah. Image upload exists is our new custom validation rule. So in this rule, we can implement any logic that we need to verify that um, this parameter is correct, right? Or is valid. So we're passing through an image path uh, and it's going to get passed in as a string as the value in passes here. So I think what we want to do here is basically just uh, return. Let's do storage. How can we check if something exists with uh, the Laravel storage class? The question is what is that under the hood? Local file driver, file system, illuminate, file system adapter. I bet it's this exists there we go so return storage um, disk public exists value we'll just hard code that we're using the public disk uh, for now it doesn't have any constructor dependencies so let's get rid of the constructor let's get rid of these stupid pointless comments and um, Whatever, let's run the test. <laughs> Should still fail because we haven't put the rule into place yet. But now if we go to the controller, I think it's actually the product. Here we want to say the banner image has to be actually the image path. New image upload exists rule. Okay, what do we get now? app image uploads exists not found so let's import that rule here and now it's probably validation error perfect so that's weird actually why is a validation exception bubbling up here we have with exception handling enabled So I'm surprised that that's happening. Given data failed to pass validation. Why would that be? Why would it with exception handling not be running properly? Patch JSON. Oh, weird. Man, that is weird that that, um, that patch JSON is the difference maker in terms of whether or not the exception gets swallowed. It's very unusual to me. But I will accept it. I think I would like to understand that. I don't understand why that wouldn't be bubbling back. Quite odd. Okay, no big deal though. Uh, banner images must be at least 250 pixels tall. That's handled in the other controller now. Theme color is always optional. All right, let's just run the whole suite. Hammer green, sweet. Let's look at the controller and see how things feel. It seems pretty good, I think. Um, nothing unnecessary hanging around. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's add another message here. Um, the attributes what, is, what do these normally look like lang oh that's not right lang validation selected attribute is invalid yeah. must be a real image path I don't know. No one's ever going to see this on the client side anyways, but 
It's fine. My first version of Laravel was 3. I don't remember the minor version, though. It was in 2014, maybe? 2013? Laravel 3. Whatever. Laravel 3 was interesting. It's kind of fun. There's some things I miss about it in some ways. Uh, but I think Laravel 4 was already like in beta when um, when, Lara when I was using Laravel 3. Before Laravel, I didn't use really anything. I was in college when I first started using Laravel in a software engineering program. So I'd done a lot of programming, but we were doing a lot of C-sharp and stuff in school, and I was a Mac user, and I didn't want to do all the Windows stuff. So I thought, hey, I'll try and use PHP and try and find a cool PHP framework. So I found Laravel and started doing all my stuff there and got a job out of school doing Laravel. So Laravel is kind of the only framework uh, that I've ever really used in super detail. Cool. So... Everything is passing. Everything is uh, working well now. So maybe what we should do is try and take a look at the view stuff. We got a little bit of time. Update product details form. So this is all going to be totally broken now. And we don't have tests for the view stuff. Um, because I am not that good at that stuff. It's something I like to learn. Uh, but we will have to get this working. So, the way that we need to kind of make this happen in general is we're going to have to make a post request to this new endpoint for uploading the images. Um, and that'll have to be a form data thing that has the banner image. And then when that request finishes and we get the response back that has the path, we're going to want to use that path to pass that through when we do this stuff. Oh, man. I definitely prefer working on the back end where I have tests. It, this is harder on the brain. I think uh, my favorite thing about testing is that it lets me be stupid. Like, I don't have to think as hard. I can just, like, try something without fully thinking through like is this totally going to work I just rely on the, my tests to tell me that um, yeah so let's see if we can get it working kind of hackily anyways so we're going to make a post request we're going to have to hard code in this endpoint for now uh, so we'll just do slash image uploads and one thing that we're going to have to think about is we might not need to do this if the image hasn't changed, right? So this this is sort of conditional. But let's just get like kind of the base path, kind of path working first. So we'll make that post request. Then we'll get a response back, which has a path. And inside this callback, um, we need to make another Axios request, which is sort of gross. Uh, hopefully, um, I'm not being stupid and forgetting how we could do some of this stuff easier with promises. So we want to make that request there. Uh, this data thing, though, is going to be, we'll make an object here. That's mostly going to be the fields from the form. I'm just going to copy these field names. This.form.name, this.form.price, this.form.description, uh, this.form.themeColor, I think. And then we want to pass through an image path. 
which is going to be response dot what was it just path path response data dot path yeah So am I wrong in that um, I can return this promise and then chain it here? I can do another dot then. We can say take at least 500 milliseconds on that one so we get like the fanciness. And then we can move this stuff up here. Whew. All right, who knows what's going to happen. Let's get the console open here. Okay, so we'll replace the getting git image. Uh, whoops, 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 whoops. Data added banners with heroicons. We'll save it. We'll get an error, of course. Um... image field is required okay so we have to set that with the correct name so it's not banner image anymore it's just an image okay yeah try this again heroicons save we did have two go through and we got uh, changes saved but we are de it's detecting unsaved changes So that's something we'll have to figure out as well. So I have this no changes as false. So I wonder why it thinks there's no, why it thinks there are changes. I'm thinking, okay, product, let's compare product name and form name. They're probably the same. Name, name, description, description. The theme color was biting me in the past, but that seems all right now. Um. Description and theme color do appear to be the same. And this dot new banner image equals null. So new banner image must not be null right now. So we should replace new banner image after this happens, I guess. So should we just say this dot new banner image equals null here? See what happens. Oh man, get out of here. All right, I knew something was funky there. Okay, let's change it to Laravel Spark. Save. Okay, seems to be working. Let's change it, let's refresh first. Up, 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 up. Refresh. Okay, so we got Laravel Spark. Change it to getting git. Save. Okay. Refresh. It is getting git. Change it to test driven Laravel. Yeah, I did see for a second that we got like the, the empty placeholder image in there, which kind of made me nervous. So say we change this to actually be Laravel Spark and it was $49. Let's make sure that when we refresh, things kind of stay as expected, yeah. Now, if um, we refresh, we'll still have the old image there, which is cool, so it didn't get uploaded necessarily. Cool, so it seems to be working. Now, the things that are probably gonna break is if we try to make changes without um, setting a new image path. Yeah, okay, so now we get an error. The image field is required. Um, and that's because we're trying to upload the image even if there is no image. So I wonder if we should do something like 
new promise resolve reject um, if this dot banner image new banner image does not equal null um, axios dot basically this put this down here man this is going to be sloppy dot then resolve reject else just resolve right away and we could actually do something clever here where we just pass through the path that was already on the product so you could resolve it with an object that has data that has path that is this dot product dot image path maybe I'm trying to be too clever right now and uh, then we can move this to be like a chain here although this is starting to look kind of I'm trying to format promise change is always kind of hairy like how do you want to do it you know everyone has their own style <laughs> All right, so we make a promise. We check to see if we need to upload an image. If we do need to upload an image, we upload it before resolving this promise so that this one doesn't run until this promise is done. If we don't have an image to upload, then we just resolve right away with something that looks like a response, um, but actually just contains the existing path. So let's see what happens. Now we get a sweet error, syntax error. What the fuck does this even say? Unexpected token. Duh, need another object here. All right. Okay, so let's say conquering git. It worked. If we refresh, the image is dead. <laughs> Whoopsie! Um, let's add the image, save it, refresh, the image is there. Okay, let's add Heroicons and watch the network and see what comes back. So the path is this hash thing. If we look here, the path for the product is oh. Okay, okay. Um, there's two pieces to this. We need an image path and an image URL. Because we're not actually getting the image, image path back from the JSON. All right, let's go to the products.php. So you can see down here I'm passing back the image URL. But the image URL, this is what I was talking about at the very beginning of the stream, like trying to wrap your head around like what prefixes are there and when is tricky. So the image URL has to include storage, but the image path does not include storage. So we need to give them back a image path too. Um, so let's look at the product test. Is that a thing? Do I have a two array version of that? Okay, so let's make sure that we test that we also pass back the unprefixed image path. And that fails because we don't. So let's add that. Okay, now we are. Oh, weird. Doesn't even have a slash. Even more bizarre. Okay. So now if we look at this, we should see that we have a product with an image path and an image URL. Uh, so if I say getting git, I go back to the network, we watch this. Okay, so that's saved and we passed through um, 
the image path correctly. So that's the existing image, so it didn't actually have to change anything. Uh, if we change it back to getting git, and we change this to conquering git, that works. And if we refresh, you know, did update. Uh, but if we do cancel here, is that when we saw some weird behavior? Someone was saying something. When you're trying to select a file, but the cancel the dialog box, the placeholder is visible. What if I go to pick a new image and then go to pick another image and hit cancel? All right, that's the circumstances. If we go to pick an image and we get that image, and then we go to pick a new image and we cancel that image, then we get nothing. So, how on earth do we solve that problem? You know how we solve it? We look at it another day. So let's look at the Kytale to do here. Fix bug with canceling image upload uh, after already choosing a new image to upload. Whatever. Throw it up at the top. And that, uh, I can either look at that sometime or look at that on the next stream. Cool. So uh, anyways, I think I'm pretty happy with like the progress that we made today. We did some cool stuff. Uh, it's been about an hour now, so I think I'm going to shut her down. I do not think I am going to be able to do a... Well, I know for sure I won't be doing a stream next Tuesday like I normally would because I will be in New York City at Laracon. So if anyone in the chat is coming to Laracon next week, make sure that you come uh, say hi and hang out. And uh, with any luck, I'll, I will be doing a stream on Friday, but it's hard to know for sure because I don't get back home until uh, Thursday afternoon. Uh, so I'm not sure what the deal is going to be on Friday. I'll, I'll try to do the Friday stream, but I'm going to miss the Tuesday stream. Anyways, uh, thanks for coming by and hanging out and checking out uh, the stream. Hopefully uh, it was fun. And thanks for helping me debug stuff as always. It's always fun to do these and hang out with everyone in the chat. And I'll see you a, a week from now with any luck. And uh, hopefully catch a couple of you at the conference next week. See you guys. See you everyone. <laughs>